Are you on a place? Come on, clap your hands. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, clap the hands and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Glory to your name, God. Come on, if you know the Lord is worthy, put your hands together and give him a praise. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. Amen. We appreciate the Lord and for what he's done and what he's going to do. Hallelujah. 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 Clap your hands one more time and give the Lord a hand, praise. Hallelujah. We appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. Amen. Where you can feel, amen, the spirit of joy is here. Hallelujah. The freedom of liberty. And the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. There is such a freedom in the atmosphere amen amen you may be seated i want to continue teaching i was teaching on stewardship amen and tonight i want to continue in that realm amen and we're going to talk about the ministry that's in you amen the ministry that is in you and back to first corinthians chapter 12 Amen. It's amazing how God has it set up in ministry. The unique thing about ministry is that, amen, leadership needs the saints and the saints need leadership. And we operate together and we work hand in hand. Amen. We operate under the same spirit, by the same spirit. And it's amazing how God, go to Ephesians chapter 4 first. Ephesians chapter 4, amen, and verse number, uh, start at 1, huh? Ephesians 
I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation. That ye walk worthy of vocation. Wherewith ye are called. Uh -huh. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, uh -huh. forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring. To keep, the unity to keep the unity of the spirit uh -huh. in the bond of peace. All right. Unity of the what? Spirit. Spirit. So in the church, there is a unifying spirit that goes with gifts from you all to me and from me to you all. There is a unifying with the gifts. Amen. We don't talk much about it. I know we you know, talk about how we are to impart gifts unto you all and different things of that nature but there is a unity of the spirit when it comes from the pulpit to the pew there's a unifying of the spirit huh, read. there is one body there's one body and one spirit and one what spirit one spirit one body and one spirit uh -huh. even as ye are called and one hope of your calling all right so the bible talks about the unifying of the spirit that same spirit then you got the amen go back to four and four and three endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in uh -huh. the bond of peace all right and then let's go back to first corinthians chapter 12 because there is a unity of the spirit in which we must operate in and operate together in. So there is a gift that's given to the church. And then you have gifts that op operate in the church. And those gifts that operate in the church in turn works with the gift that's given to the church. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So there is actually gifts that are given to the church which is the man of God is given as a gift and then you all have gifts in the church that works with the man of God so the church can function y'all follow what I'm saying just like uh, vein blood and the heart so the heart has the uh, ability to pump blood throughout the body but in order for the blood to get throughout the body it has to go through the veins to get to different parts in the body you follow me? So without the vein, the, 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 the blood can't flow freely. So just as a man of God has that position in the church to put in you, amen, as your job, amen, in return uh, to be able to function as it's under the same spirit. All right, now 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1, I'm read. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Brethren. Brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Uh-huh. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the spirit of God. Calleth Jesus a curse. <laughs> and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Now there are diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. Alright so we got diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. So we all function off of the same spirit. Although there are different gifts that are operating. But it's all by that one same spirit. All right, read, uh huh. And there are differences of administrations. <clears throat> all right, differences of administrations. So you got gifts. We went over this before, but I want you to get it again. All right. Gifts, administrations. Uh huh. But the same Lord. Uh huh. And there are diversities of operations. All right, so you got gifts, administrations, and operations. All right, now these gifts, amen, uh, definitely function through you all. This is These gifts are supposed to function through you all. Everybody should be operating in some type of gift. And, you know, administration, operation, as we listed these before, dealing with stewardship. Now, I want you to go read, read on, uh, read on a little bit more. Then we're but gonna it go is to Ephesians. the same God uh -huh. which worketh all in all. Uh -huh. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Uh -huh. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Uh -huh. To another, faith by the same Spirit. 
To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Uh -huh. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. All so right, so these gifts are given to you all to be able to operate in the spirit, right? Now, the reason for you all to operate in the spirit is not just to say, oh, I got the gift of healing. I got, you know, the gift of, uh, of the word of knowledge. Word of word. It's not just for that, but... These specific gifts are to help with the ministry of the church. And so it's very important that you understand the gifts. It's very important that you understand the operation of the gifts. And very important that you're trying to get in that place to operate because it's your job to operate in that gift and it helps the ministry grow. And I'll show you how. Just like if a person operating the gift of, of healing those operations don't just operate here in this full wall. Say if you go down to the Walmart having free prayer, you got to see somebody in a wheelchair walking in, you got the gift of healing. You say, hey, can I pray with you? Do you believe that God will heal you? And pray for that person, raise them up. Guess what happened? That brings somebody else in the church, which, which causes a ministry to grow and flow. Amen. And this is why all of these are very important. I know we talk about them and, it's, you know, most time everybody want to just, you know, most people want to operate with prophecy and, you know everybody want to have the word of wisdom word of knowledge and all that stuff like that and you know the reason why people want to have that so they can feel like there's somebody or feel like there's something but you want to be able to operate in these gifts so that it could help grow the ministry that these gifts these gifts are for the ministry so you all as in the church it's your job to have these gifts because these gifts, in turn, help with the ministry. But there's a gift that's given to you all as well. All right, go to Ephesians chapter 4. Go back to Ephesians chapter 4. All right, read, uh-huh. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord... Beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Uh -huh. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, uh -huh. endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Uh -huh. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And gave gifts unto men. Uh -huh. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Uh -huh. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Uh -huh. And he gave some apostles. Some apostles. Now, these are, in fact, the other gifts that's given unto you to perfect you. So there's a, uh, uh, there are gifts that's given to you to perfect you. And then there's gifts given to you to help perfect the ministry. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So the gifts given to you to help perfect the ministry will be those nine gifts. But the gifts to perfect you as a saint, as far as salvation, is the fivefold ministry. All right? Read, huh? And some prophets... And some evangelists uh -huh. and some pastors and teachers. All right. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. All right. So saints to perfection, you need the apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and the teacher. Now this takes that these are these are the gifts to the church as far as for salvation and that remember I was telling you that it's a two part spirit thing. So the spiritual gifts that you all get are to help the ministry, but then God also gives you all a spiritual gift then from the men of God unto salvation. So our gift is to make sure that you can understand. Go down to the, uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter three. Jeremiah chapter three and fifteen.
And I will give you. I'm going to give you. Pastors. Pastors. According to mine heart. Uh-huh. We shall feed you uh -huh. with knowledge and understanding. All right. So your leadership is to give you those things specifically for salvation. Now go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You got those three different categories uh, where you got the gifts, the operations, and the administrations. Those three things operate by the same exact spirit. All right. Uh, go back to 12 and uh, go to 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts. All right. So first thing with gifts, gifts is like the senses. So seeing, hearing, uh, um, physical touching. Uh, you got uh, hearing, teaching, all these things deal with the uh uh senses all right so that that's why you got um go back to uh um 12 and uh 12 and 8 uh -huh. for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge the word of knowledge by the same spirit uh -huh. to another faith uh -huh. by the same spirit uh -huh. to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit all right so you got healing in there that deals with laying hands on a person word of knowledge word of wisdom that deals with hearing and seeing so these are things that are operating in the spirit but it deals with the natural senses because we're a body the body of Christ just like we just like you got natural senses on your body the body of Christ have the same thing amen you follow what I'm saying all right read uh-huh to another the working of miracles working of miracles to another prophecy uh-huh to another discerning of spirits all right so now the and I wrote this down we, we went over this before write this down for the administration part is threefold the threefold it's the apostles the prophet and the teachers all right write that down for administration so you got the gifts then you got the administration It's the threefold, and that's found in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Read that, uh-huh. And God has set some in the church. Uh-huh. First apostles. First apostles. Secondary prophets. Prophets. Thirty teachers. Uh-huh. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. All right, so now you got... You got your miracles and your healings, help, diversity of tongues, and the government, uh, government, all of that fits on operations. And then I gave you this before, but I want y'all to rewrite it now. Operations, call them out again. Miracles. Gifts of healing. Healing. Helps. Government. Hel helps. And this is, we went over this for stewardship. Helps. Government. Uh-huh. Diversities of tongues. All right. Now, I'll tell you this. When you have a, a well, if you have all this stuff well-rounded in the body of Christ, you'll see how it functions real good. The growth is good. You know, you have everything in place. You don't have any loop closed. You'll see a very healthy ministry, just like your body. If everything's working in your body right, you go down there to the doctor and say, you take, you get that checkup. They say, everything look good. The calories look good. The metabolism look good. The blood look good. Sugar look good. And so what happens is you, you, you can mature. You can grow. You understand. You comprehend. So this is exactly how the body of Christ works same exact way so you got the gifts which is the senses then you got your administrations then you got your operations all right y'all follow me all right now go back go down there to the book amen of uh, Acts all right Acts chapter number start at uh, chapter 6 Now, it's Satan's job to keep you from functioning in gifts. It's Satan's job to not allow you or to pull you away from getting your mind set into, okay, I need to focus on this gift. I need to focus on this part of my ministry. You know, because a lot of people, let me tell you something. If you got a bunch of people in the church that's not doing anything, the, the ministry won't grow. People won't grow. Amen. People just die in the church. 
I'm being serious. When you got people that just sitting there holding up a pew, that's coming to service every week, every week, just sitting there, there's no maturity, there's no development, there's no use out of them. And eventually, that person, you know, it will be useless. The Bible talk, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. All right, 2 and 21, huh? If a man therefore, if a man therefore, purge himself from pur these, purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Everybody in the church should want to be a vessel unto honor. Uh -huh, read. Sanctify. Sanctify. You want to be set apart. And meet for the master's use. And have the ability to meet with God so he can use you. Mm. That's what our job is, especially in the ministry. We, we don't want to come in and just occupy a pew, but we want to be used. Whatever, this is why God gives you gifts. This is why God gives you the ability. And then he tells you to, to desire gifts. He said, well, I, I want you to desire gifts because I don't want you to just sit here in the church, act like there's nothing. Because a minute, you, you can't grow without doing anything. Amen. All right. That's just like somebody sitting in the bed or, or sitting in the hospital. Somebody just sitting in the hospital. There ain't no, there's no workout going on. There's no eating. There's no moving. That person that gets stiff. They're liable to die right there in the hospital because they're not doing anything. Sit in the hospital for six months and then try to get up and walk. You just lay in that, lay in that bed that long time. Your, bo your, your body starts to get stiff. It's the same thing, same thing operating in the church. You come to church, you, you, you'll just get stiff and you won't have the ability to move or function. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So that's why it's very important that we all figure out what is my role in the ministry and whatever my role is in the ministry, let me get in, into doing it and make sure I'm doing it well. Amen. All right, go down there to First Corinthians chapter fourteen. All right, First Corinthians fourteen. All right, and one, uh huh. Follow after charity. Follow after charity. And desire spiritual gifts. And do what? Desire. Desire spiritual gifts. spiritual gifts. Everybody should, should want a gift. You should want to be able to operate because when you operate in a gift, you contribute to the body. Amen. That's what I'm saying. So if I'm, am I, if I'm operating in the gift, then I'm making a contribution towards the body. Mm -hmm. I'm making a contribution to the church saying that, hey, listen, I, I, I'm here. I can be used. You know, I can be the foot so now we can walk. I can be the hand so now we can grab. I can be the arm so we get some motion in there. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right, go back to uh, Acts chapter 6. All right. And also, I wanted to mention this for the administration. These are um, the limbs of the church. Hey, look at limbs. We're talking about arms, legs, hands. Because the, th this ministry right here is responsible for really doing, the, you know, putting people in place, you know, holding things down, you know, touching out and do, doing different things when it comes down to the body. All right. Now, um, first Corinthians, well, I got you. Acts chapter six. All right. Six and uh, verse number one. I'll uh -huh, read. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews uh -huh. because their widows were neglected in their daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Uh -huh. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may ap appoint over this business. Uh -huh. But we will give ourselves continue, continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, and the same one thing, thing we, uh, we always we, we talk about this scripture, but we never really focus on the real reason why they had to get these men of God. It wasn't really. I mean, of course, it was so the men of God can continue to pray and fast and seek the Lord. But it was actually to give some extension. So if I got. All right. Come stand right here. If I'm here, stand up, Frank. Oh, y'all connect arms like this and point that way. All right. Yeah, connect arms just like that. Point the face that way. Come here, Ron. Do the same thing. Come here, stand right here. Grab his hand. Yeah, come on. Come here, Dana. Come here, Mariah. Come here, Imani. Come here, uh, come here, Trent. Oh, Imani, I think I got it. 
All right, no, that, let's just go. All right, so in essence, what they was doing was he was making an extension cord. So if I can't, as a pastor, if I can't reach that right there, I'm going to build something so I still touch it. Wow, that's good. So now I got people that could, I, I'm, this is why people are in position in church, because the pastor can't do everything. Right. But I can do it through this. So I, I can say, hey, I need you to open that door. So I'm going to open the door, but I'm going to open it through y'all. Come on. The door is now open. My instruction, or I want to open the door, but I made an extension of myself so that the door could be open. Wow. This, is why, this is why those men were chosen because the apostles couldn't touch everything. So what they want to do is extend themselves so everything can be touched through him still. That's right. Somebody help us out. Hallelujah. Are they snatching in? All right. Y'all be seated. So the, so the sole reason for, amen, the body of Christ and adding, this is why the Bible said as many members, but as one body. Those many members, if as many members we get, the longer the extension cord reaches. So if I'm trying, Lord, have mercy. If I'm trying to reach Baltimore, Maryland, guess what? We got to build all the way to where we can reach there. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Uh, go to Genesis 11. Let me show you this. Eleven and one, uh huh. Read. And the whole earth was a one language and a one speech. Uh -huh. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Uh -huh. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. So a bunch of men decided to build a tower to reach somewhere. But the only way that they could reach, they, had to, they couldn't just build, no, no, they had to build that thing together. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to, amen, be an extension or if we're going to have the ability to grow, we got to be able to come together amen and do our part so that we can be extended amen. so if it, just think about it if amen if it's just me and frank doing everything and i'm trying to stay in the word and we try to get the door open try to get the door open son we really can't we can't get there because we don't have enough people that's doing something so that the job can get done y'all follow what i'm saying but even with that being said, everybody got to have that. This is why the Bible talks about that, that, that bond and that unity, that spirit of unity. That spirit of unity, it causes everybody to unify and have the same mind. Because sometimes you can have a lot of people, but everybody don't have the same mind and the job still don't get done. This is why the Bible says this. Go to, um, go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1 and 10, I believe. All right. Read. 1 and 10. Uh -huh. Who delivered us from so great a death? 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of... Pay, pay attention to this. Uh. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. I want you to speak the same thing. Uh. And that there be no divisions among you. No divisions among you. But that ye be perfectly joined together. Perfectly joined together. In the same mind. Wait a minute. Come here, y'all. Come back. Everybody that was back up here. Come back up here. We can all be perfectly joined together. But if we don't have the same mind, and my mind is to open that door, your mind is to go over there, your mind is to go over there, your mind to come this way, your mind is to go that way. All right? This is my mind to open the door. Everybody do what I just said. So now 
We, we're, we're perfectly, now pay attention. You all right, son? All right, go sit down. <laughs> go sit down. All right, so the Bible says it talks about being perfectly joined together, but it didn't leave out the mind. That's right. Because we could be all lined up perfectly joined, but if we don't have the same mind, we can't get the job done. And a lot of times we got the perfectly joined down packed, but we don't have the same mind. So the, the ability, so the, the mission, the mission is for us to save souls. Is that right? Why is it so hard for you, you know, as a saint of God, you know, coming to the church, you know, really, you're just required to bring one person to God, baptize in Jesus' name, fill the Holy Ghost, and become a member of the church. One person a year. Just one person. Can you work on one person for 365 days? You know why we can't do that? We come to church every Sunday, so we're perfectly joined, but we don't have the same mind. So we just, you know, we just got the privilege joined together, meaning that we, we're joined, we come together, but we don't have the same mind of evangelism. We don't have the same mind of outreach. We don't have the same mind of being that witness. Amen. Y'all follow me? Because if we did, amen, it, 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 it wouldn't be no cease anywhere if everybody had the same mind. We can't just have two people with the same mind and we're perfectly joined together because the whole the job can't get done. Amen. It's the job of the pastor to feed you all. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Go to 2 Peter. All right. It's our job to feed. Uh, First Peter five. First Peter five and two. Feed the flock of God. Feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Uh huh. Taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. All right. So the job of the man of God or the pastor is to feed the flock. But while I'm free feeding y'all, it's y'all job to breed. Y'all follow me? It's the job of the saints to breed. A lot of times we look for the pastor. Now, if I go out there and I'm going to witness, I, I guarantee you I'm bringing somebody in. If I'm going out and inviting somebody to church, I guarantee you I can bring people to church. But it ain't my job. I shouldn't have to. It's way more of y'all than it is me. Amen. So if you think about it, we all have the same mind. We can be able to flow more so like a body and grow like a body. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But we got the same mind. We just can't have, you know, Leron and, and Sharonda. Only ones in their mind is, hey, man, we got to figure out a way to reach people in the streets. We can't, you know, everybody got to have the same mind. Amen. Even when we have our evangelistic services out in the streets, if you ain't doing nothing, you should be out there. Well, let me say this. If you're not working, you should be out there. Amen. The first couple of times I preached, it was a lot of us out there. And as the days, as, as the weeks went by from when I started that, that was last year. What year? I mean, what month was that? We didn't start. The, no, we started last year. We started in December. It was, yeah, because... Cause remember we did part six from December on to about um, <laughs> so so it started in started in December, uh, something around there, something around December or November, something. Around there. I was preaching in the streets since then. Cause it was cold out there. My hand was frozen to the mic one time, but you can see how the uh, uh, ministry of the streets digress. It should never digress or regress. It's supposed to progress. If you see, if we have ministry out in the service, can you imagine? See, this is what happens. If only seven people or five or six people that come, and say we got 80 people that's in the church, we've got five people that come outside, you can't really attract that many people. When you see a whole bunch of people, you know, people, they news it. They want to find out what, they try to figure out what's going on, what they got going on out there. But when people see people, it draws people. Hey Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You remember when people used to be out there fighting and stuff? And, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all see a whole bunch of people. Everybody started walking over there. What, what, what's going on? <laughs> so, you're, you're, so your attendance, even at those sessions, are uh, uh, unnecessary or needed. 
Your, your attendance is needed. If you ain't doing nothing, come to the street service. It might be a message you heard already, but tell a preacher to preach. Because it's, it's, it's souls to be, it's souls to be won. And I know sometimes, you know, you in your heart, you know, oh, I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I want make that sacrifice. Because it helps. It, it, it shows people that we're together. Amen. You, we go out there, ain't nothing but two or three people out there. People are going to think that they come to church. That's all they're going to see, two or three people. And, you know, people, they, they notorious. And they dare to come down to, you know, if there's only a couple people in that church. They don't, they don't believe in ministries just starting. People see churches, they, want, they, they think the church board had 2,000 members on the first day it opened up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, so it's the job of the pastor to feed, and it's you all job to breed. But the only way that you could breed is by coming together. Y'all ain't saying that. Let me say that again. The only way that you could breed is by coming together and having relationships with each other. It's just like a, a, a husband and a wife. If that husband, if that husband sit down in the same house with his wife, and he's just looking at her, and they're looking at each other, no, no relationship is happening, ain't no baby coming. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Amen. If ain't no conversation taking place, there's, you know, no type of relationship, ain't no baby about to come up in there. Babies don't just appear. Y'all ain't saying that. Only baby that just appeared, it, it even, it, Jesus ain't just appeared because the Bible says that the Holy Ghost got a bring. <laughs> so there was some type of coming together in order for him to come to pass. And for the ministry to grow, we got to come together. We got to do some more relating. We got to do some more, this one talking to that one, that one hanging out with this one, this one we're doing that one. We got to be able to come together and go out and grab souls. Do you think it's by coincidence that when the disciples went out, they went out by, they ain't go out by, by themselves. They went out two by two because two is an indication of relationship. God even said if we, if we don't even come together and touch and agree, he ain't even coming. Go down there to Matthew chapter uh, 18. Amen. Y'all with me? And I got a question too. How long we got to preach on evangelism and how long we got to preach on coming together and how long we got to preach on getting souls? Just curious. I, I want to know that. Because I've been preaching it. You got questions? <laughs> I've been preaching this for eight years. Y'all had it one point. At one point in time, y'all had it. Y'all had it. Y'all had it. People was inviting it. Come 12 people at a time. The altar was full, about 60 people, and the congregation still was full. With 50 or 60 people at the altar. Because you had the concept of evangelism. You had the concept of, okay, we got to go in. We got to go out in the streets. And so y'all was bringing people by just putting something on Instagram. Remember people come up and say, I don't know who put the flyer up, but somebody invited me by the way of Instagram. I just saw a little flyer that said, come to church, and I came to church. Y'all would pack the church out and have 30 first-time visitors on a Sunday. Amen. So I don't think that, you know, when it comes down to us being unified and us... Uh, coming together to produce. I don't think that conversation has to continue. We got to preach this every every three months. Amen. All right, read, uh-huh. Uh, 18 and, what is that? 16. Uh, 19, huh? Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Uh -huh. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. In essence, what God was saying is that when we come together, we become pro productive. So if we come together, we can produce something. So we have to come together to produce. Y'all getting fed. Amen. Y'all eating good. But when y'all going to start procreating? When y'all going to start producing what you've been eating on? It's the job of the man of God to break things down to you, chop it up and feed you. And it's your job to take that out and draw people in. I know we got Facebook and Instagram and, 
you know, I, I know it's hard, to, you know, because y'all y'all haven't been sharing the messages for so long, so y'all created a bad habit of not sharing it. So you know, even now when you look at the the lives, you still got five or six shares. And I done told everybody that's a form of evangelism. They got to repeat it every every day to break the habit. So just like you know, us ministering about evangelism and coming together, we gotta you know, we gotta break that bad habit of you not wanting to be productive. Amen. Yes, you got a question? Okay. All right. Now, go back to uh, Acts chapter 6. All right. 6 and 1, uh-huh. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied... There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews uh -huh. because their widows were neglected neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the now, Holy Ghost. Now watch this. When you look at, if you got people in position... And we're unified and we got, you know, people that are active in ministries. What happens is more people. So say, for instance, I got 15 people that is in position to do something. Then that means that 15 people can come at a time to get ministered to or dealt with. But if we don't have 15 people that's dealing with different issues, guess what? All of 15 problems come with me. And then the resolution or the, the problems to get, you know, resolved, it takes longer. And the pro you, you, the process is longer when you don't have a lot of people in position. That's just like if I got we got one if you got one phone line at a uh, at, at a call center, and you got all these people calling in because T-Mobile phone is raggedy, it ain't got no good service. So you got all these people calling in on that one line. But if you get 15 employees, so now I got more access. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So now there's more people that can deal with more issues versus that one person. Amen. So now this means that you got to find out what gift you operate in, what position you flow in, so that you're going to be a better help to the ministry. Amen. Amen. Because, can I be honest with you? After you, amen, come into the ministry and get help, it's your time to help somebody else. Mm. Let me tell you something. Hey, Journey, have you ever changed a uh, Journey diaper before? You have? Okay, all right. So listen, that's her big sister. That's a little. She when she was a little baby, she helped her because she grew up. So she done had her diaper changed by her mama, and then now she. So she had a little sister that come in, and her sister mess or whatever. Then she cleaned it up as a bigger sister. Same concept in the church. When other people come in, we should have the ability to go ahead and train them up and help them become. Y'all see people coming here, don't have a clue about ministry, nothing. Y'all just see, y'all just, hey, praise the Lord, y'all go on about your business. Don't know how to train and develop people. I need, I need more people that can train and develop. I need more people that can help, more people that know how to work, more people know how to get out in the field. We need more people that, that are soldiers. We don't need people that, you know, what happens is you come in church, somebody help you get you where you need to be, and you don't have the ability to help nobody else. You done been, you was tore up and, and beat up, jacked up, and somebody helped you. So it's your job to go back out there and help somebody else. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all get to that place where you want to be and you find you content. You know, oh, I found Jesus and uh, Lord did it good to me and God did this for me and I done got I done got right, I done got clean, but now you won't help nobody else. And this is why some of y'all, I pair y'all up with other people. You know why I'm pairing you up? Because somebody helped you. Now it's your turn to help somebody else. You know, the bad part is I can't pair everybody with somebody. Because a lot of y'all ain't got that spirit of help. You don't have that mindset to help somebody else. You don't have that thought process to say, oh, let me help sister such and such. Let me help brother such and such. I know because I used to be there. I used to be in that same situation. So let me help this person. That's the job of the church. Yes. Say it again. The help? Well, what, what, what you do is you, you just got to learn how to you got to learn how to deal with people 
And so you got to learn people. And the, the job of the saints, because, and this is why it's very important, and this is why a lot of y'all young men travel with me, and I do certain things, and I do be, be with some of y'all a lot, is so that y'all can learn my spirit, learn how I deal with certain people, learn how I deal with certain situations. Some of y'all don't know, you know, a lot of, because I, I, a lot of times if I'm riding with somebody, and, and then somebody got an issue, a problem, I don't ever, you know, nobody, you don't know who I'm talking to, but you see how I'm handling the situation. So it's, it's good to be able to learn your pastor's spirit. Just like Bob, Jesus said this, uh, go down there to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 to 28. Uh -huh. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All ye that what? Labor and are heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. Uh huh. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. And I want you to learn. Mm. So you got to learn. The, 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 the behavior of your leader so that you can know how to deal with people. That's why certain meetings, I let certain people come in on those meetings because I want them to learn how to deal with people with certain issues. Certain issues, everybody knows how to deal with certain issues, but when you get by your leader, you see how your leader deal with it, you say, okay, if this ever happened, then I can deal with it that way. Or if this happened like that, I'll be able to deal with that that way. Y'all follow what I'm saying? You understand, uh, Soraya? Got it? Okay. All right. Now, Go back to where I got you at now. All right. All right, somebody wrote a little novel here. Hold on. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Very good point. It says, should we be conscious of the things we share? Yes, depending upon your, your followers, if you got a certain group that's following you that's new and they don't really know no doctrine and stuff like that, I wouldn't share no doctrinal stuff. I would share all the Sunday messages, the Jesus messages. Those are the ones I'm going to share. You know, Wednesday night, this is, you know, Wednesday night teaching different. But if I'm teaching doctrine and stuff like that, because the Bible says something. Uh, go down there to Matthew real quick. All right. Go to Matthew 7 and, and uh, 5, huh? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Uh -huh. Give not that which is holy unto the dog. Give not that which is holy unto who? The dogs. To the dogs. You know what dogs are? Huh? Say, say it again. That's animals, but what is he referring to? Sinners, people in the world. Every time, every time Jesus talked about people that were, and this is how you, you know, when the Bible talked about unclean things and coming to the temple and all that stuff like that. Whenever he talked about dogs, you vipers, all different things like that, he was talking about people that had a worldly nature. Because a dog is wild. It's a wild animal. When you was in the world, you was wild. So every time he referred to people that was in the world, he said they were they were like animals. So he said, don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. Uh-huh. Neither cast your pearls before swine. So it, what this scripture is telling us is that the word that we get, the pure word, like uh, uh, or the letters that was given to the church, the dogs don't need that. The people that are, uh, 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 are not necessarily the dogs, but the people that are in the world, they don't need the letters to the church. That's for the church. So if it's a message that's preaching to the church or, you know, different behaviors or, you know, doctrinal stances, different things like that, and, you know, if you got a certain uh, audience on your live that you've been trying to reach, just share the Jesus messages. Share those evangelistical messages. Don't share the, the ones that are more doctrinal because people can't handle that. They're like, man, I got to give that up. I can't do that. Oh, man, what this church? Why I got to give up? Because that's how people think. They think about all the things that they got to give up, but they don't think of what they don't think about what God gave up for them. Mm. They think about in this this life, well, I got to give up this, I got to give up that, I got to give up that, I got to give up that, but they don't think of what God did for us. So yeah, so so for that question, no, we don't want to uh, share those type of. Uh, all right, now, how can you find what gift, what your gift is? Well, a lot of times, all right, I got the little notes today. All right. Um, go to Matthew 
go back to All right, go back to Matthew chapter 4. So, 9 times out of 10, or we'll say 10 times out of 10, whatever your gift is is something that you naturally are good at. So, if you're naturally good at something, then, you know, your gift would follow that, right? So, some of y'all are natural. How many of y'all believe y'all can coach a team? Stand up. Believe you can coach? Stand up. All right. All right. So if it's natural for you to coach, it's natural for you to lead and develop people. Y'all can be seated. And some of y'all just have that nature. I remember this happened when I, when I met, as I watched uh, Michael uh, grow up, and as he was, as he'd been growing and listening to how he talk and different things like that, I say he sounded like a coach. The way he talked, he sounded like a coach and had that coaching abil uh, 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 ability. And so most case scenario, if you can coach, you have the ability to lead people. And so what God will do is he'll take that coaching side and put you in the ministry and have you leading people in the church. Because you already have that skill. Amen. And if you have that skill, then God will use you in that realm. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Now, go to uh, what I said. Four and uh, eighteen, huh? And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now they were fishers; they were they were considered fishermen, right? So they was on the boat fishing. They was out there fishing and getting fish. But he said, now, I'm going to take that bit because, let me tell you something. Everybody in here is fish. Everybody in here fish. So he said, now, that you got all these people that is considered fish. But when you out there fishing, it's the same concept as getting somebody saved. If it, anybody ever fished before? All right. Now, first place you got to, what, what's the first, what, first step to fishing is what? Huh? Okay, bait. Is that the first? Is that the first step? Huh? The location. Who said location? Location. Because it don't make sense to get no bait if you don't know where you're going. Because it's because you can go to the pond, or you go to the sea, or you can go down there to the ocean, you go down to the Pacific, go to the Atlantic, you go to some little creek. You, it, the, 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 the bait that you're going to use in the ocean ain't going to be the same bait that you use in the pond. Because two different fish. So if I'm going down there, so the location matters. So I want to find out where I'm going first. So if I'm going down there preaching the gospel to all every creature, if I got to go find a hood to go preaching, that's the place I'm going. So now, now that I found the hood, what kind of bait do I need to draw them in? So what is the hood dealing with? Most hood deal with violence, drugs, abuse mentally, physically, sexually, all of these different abuses. So now... I could find out what kind of bait. So when I go out there to minister, I got the bait to pull them in. So now I'm dealing with abuse. My message is geared towards abuse. Coming out of abusive relationships and God can heal you from the hurt. You know, I could get a program that could go ahead and pull them out. So now I've converted the fishing naturally to a spiritual fishing. Same concept as the ability that you have as a, as a coach. You can change that concept and be over a ministry in the church because you have that ability to lead people. My whole life I've been a leader. Ever since I was a little child. Leader. Lead, everyone, lead people to do bad stuff and good stuff. <laughs> right? So because I did that, now look at me now. I'm still leading because that, that was just something that was in me. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, you had a question. Right, right, absolutely. Different testimonies would, would, would be like bait. All right, Any, anybody else? I thought I'd see another, somebody else hand. All right, all right. Now, so he said, I'm going, I'm going to change that, that ability. I'm going to change what you said or what you're doing. And then the Bible also said that if you have a desire, if you have a desire, you know, because whatever your desire is, it can become your passion. If you desire to help broken women guess what 
you'll be passionate about it. I, I, I was, I'm a firm believer that, you know, even if you went to school to be a, a, a chef, you went to school to be a chef, but if you're passionate about being a, 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 a child care provider, ain't no need for you being no chef. Go work for a school system or go work for a daycare somewhere. Open up your own daycare because wherever your passion is. You can say, I like being a chef, but my passion is this. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I went to school for criminal justice, but my passion was in, in the restaurant industry. It was there. I mean, I had a, a strong passion for running restaurants. And I was successful at it because I had a passion for it. Think about it. You get you a job that you ain't passionate about, you will halfway do it. Because every day you're going to be on your way out of there. Man, I can't wait to clock out of here, boy. <laughs> sooner, sooner you just, it's, it's, it's 457. You sitting out there. You packed up, ready to go. You sitting at the door. <laughs> and they, 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 they better not ask me nothing. I remember we used to, <laughs> people used to work for me, man. They had their station cleaned up to a T. At my, my, they get off at 5 o'clock. They sitting there waiting. Well, Mr. Eli, my uh, station, my station clear. Uh, I, I don't really, uh, you know. I really don't want to do anything, but if there's, if there's something else you need me to do. But well, 5 o'clock hit, man, it, it, it's almost like you they, you blink your eye, they gone. See, they used to get their station checked out 15 minutes before they left. So at 5 o'clock, they just go ahead and head out. Because I told them, if you leave your job without letting me know, you fired. Because it's called job abandonment. That's what I told them. If you, ain't, you, leave, if you leave out of here without me knowing, you leave, how you leave your job, you ain't tell me you left. I know you gone. Somebody, somebody got to fill your position. I said, okay, that's job abandonment. God bless you. Have a good year. We'll see you next time. All right. How do you perfect the gift of healing? Um, well, I think anything you perfect is by doing it. As a basketball player, you know, you got to shoot a certain amount of jump shots to per perfect your shot. Is that right, KK? <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. People can hinder people can hinder their gifting. People can hinder the process of the gift. People can hinder where they are with their gift based upon them trusting and believing in what God said or trusting and believing that the gift will operate. And this goes like I was telling the Yam last night. This goes by, you know, uh if a, if you if you believe or trust uh what God placed in you, you'll be able to operate. When you get in a certain level with God, I know that I can pray for certain things. I know God will do it because of the relationship that we have. And if you don't have that tight relationship with God, it's going to be hard for him to do stuff for you or hard for you to, to think that he did it for you because you don't have that strong enough relationship. So you got to be confident. All right. Tell me what that means, son. All right, you try to try to figure that one. I want to answer it, but I got I don't know. I'm having a hard time understanding. All right, all right. Acts chapter six. Go back to Acts six. All right, Acts chapter six. All right, six and one. Read, huh? And in those days. When the number of the disciples was multiplied, uh -huh. there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Hang on one second. Yes. Oh, that's yours? What was the question? Yeah, absolutely. As long as their parents are right with it. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. All right, read. There was, um, and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Yes, question. Oh, 
Oh, absolutely. Go to go to John chapter 10. Let me show you this. John chapter 10 and 16. Bring them from everywhere. Wherever they come from. Can you bring somebody from a Baptist church? Yes, sir. They need the truth. And other sheep I have. You which are that? not of this fold. Other sheep you, that I have that are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. Them also I must do what? Bring. Bring them. So there's people that are in different uh, religions or different doctrines that's not true. God said, I'm, I'm going to bring them on over. Why? Uh huh. And they shall hear my voice. They're going to hear my voice. And there shall be one fold. It's going to be one fold. So God don't want all these different denominations, all these different churches. He said it's going to be one fold. The, the apostolic church is God's church. So if, if that's God's church, there are people that's out there. Because when I was preaching, I, we was so-called non-denomination when I first started preaching. And we was. And then, you know, I, I never been Baptist or nothing like that. But that was still false, too. That wasn't, we, we didn't have truth. We didn't have the whole truth. You follow what I'm saying? So I got brought out of that false doctrine and brought to the truth. Just like a lot of you all have been brought out of false doctrine and brought to the truth. So, yeah, bring them. Bring them Baptist, Methodist, Episcopal, uh, <laughs> Catholic, all of them. All right, all right, go back. All right, let me get out, let me get y'all out of here. Acts chapter six. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, uh -huh. because their widows were neglected in their daily ministration. Uh -huh. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, "It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Uh -huh. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report." full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over the business. Uh -huh. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen. That was amazing that those people got excited about them putting people in position so that it could help the pastor. And a lot of times people, you know, they get upset. Well, why can't I talk to the pastor about this? Why can't get I can't get to the pastor? You know, my 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 jacket ripped in the church. Why I need to talk to the pastor about my jacket being ripped? You know, and so they put people in position because listen, they was having a problem because these women wasn't getting you know the 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 attention they needed during their you know administration uh, issues with their you know like kids and all, all that stuff, the, the money, all that different things like that. So they had to put people in position that can deal with certain natural affairs. So that the pastor, just like, just like somebody called me and said, hey, pastor, uh, we need to get some uh, gas for the bus. I'm going to say, well, what you calling me for? <laughs> I don't drive the bus. <laughs> you better call Leron or Vante or Frankie somebody. You follow what I'm saying? Because those people are in position for those specific things. Y'all follow me? All right, read. Uh-huh. A man full of faith. Man full of faith. And of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And Philip and Prochorus. And Nicanor and Timon and Timaeus and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. They set before them, uh huh. And when they had prayed, they laid hand, their hands on them, uh huh. And the word of God increased. So now, when they right when they got in position, they got hands laid on them. And nowadays, people say, "Well, I was born with this gift, and I got this, and I don't need nobody to lay hands on me." If you want to be effective in ministry, you need somebody to lay hands on you to help that gift that sent you. Amen. And that's where that connection come together. And you got to learn how to, you know, work with the pastor. Amen. Work with, you know, people in leadership. Go to Numbers chapter 11. Y'all give me three more scriptures. Uh, four more scriptures. And then I'm going to close. All right. Anybody know uh, the Old Testament positions of leadership? Priest, king. And the prophet. Good job, son. So the prophet, priest, and king. So those are the, the positions that the Old Testament had. All right. Now, any, any of these offices are uh, synonymous to any offices today? What is it? The priest is what? Is who? All right. Any, anybody else? You said the king is the apostle. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Very good. What'd you say, Tori? That's what you was about to say. The king is, huh? What are you gonna say? 
Say it again. President for king, good. All right. Say it again. Government for who? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think all of them are governing officials. Uh huh. And the government, uh, it, I, it wouldn't fit out. It, it, I mean, maybe as an auxiliary or something like that, maybe. Yes. Good. He said that. I wanted somebody else to get. All right. So the prophet would be the apostle now in this day. All right. All right. Everybody got that? So the prophet, priest, and king is the apostle, the pastor, and whatever the, the leadership over a country would be, would be the king. All right. So in those days, who would do, who would anoint the positions? Who would do, who would be the, the person to anoint the positions? Somebody over here? Huh? Very good. The prophet. All right. So the prophet would be the one to anoint whoever for the positions, right? All right. So now go to, go to the, um, which is synonymous today. So when people, just like when we, you know, get office and, you know, when elders are being ordained and positioned and everything like that, the, the man of God lay, lay hands on them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you do that. Yep. Because that's, his, that's a part of his organization. Right. All right. Uh, all right. Numbers 11. And verse number 16. Now, this is so that the you all could be able to work and operate with me let me show you this numbers 11 and verse number start at 16 huh and the lord said unto moses the lord said unto moses gather unto me uh -huh. 70 men of the elders of israel whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people uh -huh. and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. Uh -huh. And I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. I'm going to take your spirit, Moses, uh -huh. and will put it upon them. And I'm going to put it on them. So a lot of times when people get in position, it's good to have the spirit of your leader. That's how we work together. We work together by us having the same like spirit. So the spirit that's on your leader can be on you. So you can be able to operate and function in the church. It's just like a person that's uh, uh, like, like you last night. Last night when I was teaching last night and the script, I'm trying to find a scripture because he, he knows how to follow me in the spirit. He was already, already had the book open. Okay. He started calling. I'm looking for the verse. I was at the chapter looking for the verse. He called it out. Is this the one? Is this the one? Because he has, the, he has that connection of my spirit. And so a lot of people say, well, I ain't supposed to have, I don't even know how to pass the spirit. Well, that, that's, that's how the Bible laid out. Amen. There's nothing wrong with having the spirit of your leader because that's how we get the chance to operate together and be able to work hand in hand. We can be able to work together by you having the spirit of your leader. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. That's just like, you know, some of y'all, when y'all drive me, some of y'all ain't got my spirit. That's why I don't go to sleep. <laughs> If I'm awake while you drive me, boy, I'm nervous and scared. Oh, God. <laughs> if I fall asleep, then I might say, okay, they got spirit. You know, they know how to drive me. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Amen. Y'all, it's all right to smile in church. Y'all looking deep tonight. <laughs> all right. So, the, uh, he, he, he placed Moses' spirit. Read, read that again. Uh -huh. I will come down and talk. Uh -huh. With thee. With thee. Uh -huh. And I will take of the spirit which is upon them. I'm going to take your spirit. Uh -huh. And will put it upon them. And I'm going to put it on them. Uh -huh. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. And they're going to bear the burden of the people with thee. Meaning that I could lay hands or put people in the position that have the like spirit. And they could, they could uh, uh, take on some of the burden that the pastor has. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Me, proper example. We used this example before. Um, let me see. All right. Well, that's too much stuff. Y'all come here. A few of y'all brothers come here. All right. All right. Let me get Dante real quick. Y'all stay up here. 
and uh, come here, Drayla. All right, I want y'all, you and Dante, to lift that up. All right, I want y'all to lift it up as high as y'all can. All right, now you get up under there. All right, now you get under there. All right, so now when we only had two people, all right, y'all can put it down. One <laughs> Mike came in there. He <laughs> so this could be a burden. And if one person, ain't no, ain't no one person, ain't nobody about it. I, there ain't no way I'm be doing this by myself. So <laughs> when you got that burden, that one burden, I mean, so, you know, the burden of the pastor, that, that, and then God, uh, or, or, or there would be young men of God or people in the church that can help bear that burden. So what happens is when you have people that help bear it, it becomes lighter. So you got more people holding one thing, it becomes lighter. You let that thing go, that one person holding it, uh, try to pick this up. Don't put no hole in the wall now. No, just try it. I don't want you to just try, right? So, right? All right, try to, can you lift it all the way up? All right, so you see what I'm saying? So now but we add somebody in there, then we got to, you know, it's, 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 it's better, it's easier. The burden is more light. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right, read, uh-huh. That thou bear it not thyself alone. Now, because God don't want, the, he don't want the man of God to bear everything by himself, meaning he don't want him to have hands and everything. That's why, that's why we got presidents over auxiliaries. That's why I, I'm not taking up the offering. I'm not, you know, I, 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 I'm not the deacon, the trustee, the steward, the praise and worship leader. I count the offering after church. I'm the general secretary. I, man, I, I, I wouldn't have no hair on my head. <laughs> Stressed out. You know what ministry do to your hair, man? Ministry of diet or to cut it? <laughs> 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 Ministry, ministry of diet for you, or to cook, give you a little nice little haircut, and then start right there in the, in the middle. <laughs> Have like a little stadium there, going there. <laughs> little, little baseball stadium. Amen. <laughs> All right. What about women? How can we have our pastor spirit, or how does that work with us? Yes, y'all, y'all can have my spirit as far as that gentle side. Yeah, not not the leadership and trying to be masculine and trying to you know all that stuff, Amen. but you can <laughs> you can have your your pastor spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, out All right, but you can have your pastor spirit that 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 gentle side. You know, Jesus, he was he was he had two sides of him. Jesus had two sides. Anybody know the two sides? All right, the lion and the lamb. Two sides. Two different ones. A lamb is more gentle than meat. The lion, a roar, and more, you know. So the lion was God in the Old Testament. The lamb was him in the, in the New Testament scripture. So he had two sides. Amen. Y'all follow me? So you, you as women can have the spirit of the pastor, that gentle side, and, you know, that, that, that helping side, that ministering and giving side, pouring in side, that, you know, that, 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 uh, 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 um, that sensitive side. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Now. Just don't come up here and try to put no robe on and try to come up here and <laughs> lay hands on nobody. All right. Now, go down there. Where I got you at now? All right, read a little bit more of that, huh? 11 is, uh-huh. 11 or 18. 18, huh? Read. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was, for it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. All right. So what happened was, and I, and I gotta hurry up because I gotta get y'all out of here. But what happened was, he put people in positions also to help convey messages. And what I mean by that is that when people are in position, you know, so the pastor ain't gotta call each and every individual person saying, "Hey, there's a meeting tomorrow. Hey, there's a meeting tomorrow. Hey, there's a meeting tomorrow." But I got people in position. I make up one phone call and say, "Hey, listen." Hey, hey, Joel, I need you to make sure everybody get this message. Or, hey, uh, Sister Runner, you get your, everybody get this message. And what happens is they, in return, could help spread that message out versus me having to do all of these different things. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Now, go down there to, um, amen, uh, 2 Kings chapter 3. Uh, 
Uh, uh, first Kings chapter two. I'll just go there. First Kings chapter two and one. Uh huh. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, "I go the way That's, of." What, 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 where I got you at? First Kings two. Two and one. All right, Second Kings two and one. I'm sorry. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah in heaven by a whirlwind, uh huh, uh, that Elijah went up with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, "Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel." And Elisha said unto him, "As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee." So they went down to Bethel. So we need some more people that don't mind. Even if I say, hey, I, I, I don't need y'all to come with me tonight. I'm going to go down out to go preach somewhere. I don't need nobody to come or y'all don't have to come. We need people to say, no, Pastor, you ain't going out there by yourself. I'm still coming with you. Wow. <laughs> That's what Elijah said. He said, you, you know how you, sometimes you say, all right, we don't need everybody to come to, to prayer tonight. I mean, you don't have to, you know, it's not mandatory to come with me to travel down there to preach. It's not mandatory. Right? If I say it's not mandatory, you should make that choice and say, hey, hey no, uh-uh. Pastor ain't going by himself. I need some more. Oh, y'all looking funny. Amen. That's what that's what Elisha, that's what Elisha did. He said, Man, please, you ain't, you ain't about to leave me out here. I'm about to stick by you because there's something that you have that I need. And let me tell you something. I'm going, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna close. Uh, one thing about a man of God, especially when he's traveling, you can get a different side of your pastor or the man of God. When he's traveling, you can you can experience a different side of the man of God outside of where we are here. All right, let me give you an example. When Jesus was in Nazareth, the Bible said he didn't do a lot of miracles there. Why he didn't do a lot of miracles there? They couldn't receive it because they they looked at him as oh that's that's just little Jesus. He ain't nothing, nobody special. But when Jesus got out of Nazareth, all the miracles took place. Everything that could happen would happen because he was outside of his hometown. And sometimes, you know, I'm just going to say, I'm just saying this, but sometimes you can take your leader for granted. You can start, you know, you just, okay, that's just pastor, that's just pastor, that's, you know, just pastor. You know, but, but then you, you forget that, that prophet side of the pastor. So then, you know, the prophecy can't flow freely because y'all looking at him as just, oh, that's just pastor. But when you go, when I go out of town, that, that God opened me wide open. I see everything going on. It, it, it's just because when, I, when you step out of town, because, you know, sometimes the Bible talks about a prophet ain't honored in his own country. So every time you get your man of God, pay attention to a man of God that leave home. Pay attention. It, it don't matter who you are. It don't matter what pastor it is, that, wherever that home, that home place is, it's easier for them to flow freely when they go on the outside. The spirit of revival take control on them. Spirit of prophecy, different things, of healing take place. Because sometimes you get comfortable, you know, some of y'all look at me like your father. So you look at me like your father, it's, it's almost like, okay, that's, that's just my dad, you know, that's just my pops. You know, so you miss, and it's nothing against you, but, it, you know, that, 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 that spiritual side, it can't really manifest as hard because, you know, we're home. Amen. So that's why it's very good, I'm coming to you, that's why it's very good to, when the man of God got to preach out and go out and preach, it's good for y'all to support. Good to show up because then you can then again you'll get a reminder and say, Whoa, you see that God used pastor tonight. Boy, goodness I ain't seen a priest like that. Boy, he ain't preach like that at home. We don't preach like that at home. Pastor, get out there. <laughs> Amen. I remember what's up, somebody was talking to me uh, before. They said, Pastor, you know, they heard a lot of me teaching and teaching. They got a lot of teaching. And I had preached out somewhere. They said, Man, Pastor, I didn't know he preached like that. Well, you, you had, had tore the house up down there where, where I came from. Well, because I don't preach, I don't have to preach to y'all because yeah, me, me preaching to y'all, preaching is for more of an evangelistical side. I teach y'all. Y'all have been here. I teach y'all. Y'all need anybody to preach to y'all? Teach y'all so y'all can get full and, and, and get big. Amen. Yes, question. Absolutely. It could, it could be the same thing. That's why a lot of y'all don't operate as it. Because if one of y'all, if, 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 if uh, say for instance, Sharonda done came. Come here, daughter. Sharonda done came and got, you know, hands laid on her. She got the gift of healing. And she go down there and, lay hands on the brother. 
All right. She come over here <laughs> and she lay hands on Tori and start praying for Tori's arm. The Tori arm was hurting. And she start praying for her arm and she praying. And in, in, in some cases, because they've been here and they're like sisters, she, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to receive it. Kind of hard to receive it. But then, you know, somebody from another city or something like that come lay hands on Tori. The door, Tori she, start, she start feeling something. If I, so it, it, it happens like that. It happens like that. So that's why we, and this, and this is why we got to, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is why it's very important that we, we grow together and have that unity in the bottom of uh, piece of that, in that spirit. Yes. No, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. We become too common. When you become too common, you know, common ground. Not saying that, you know, if you got the gift of healing surrounding you, you ain't supposed to walk past, you know, walk past people like you're just so deep or anything like that. But what happens is, you know, you, you can't be so common in the spirit. So when, 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 when God, you know, we have a service and God is moving, you got to be able to respect God's spirit. Don't look at the man or don't look at the woman, but look at the God inside of the man or the God inside of the woman. Sometimes we look so much at that package. I was telling y'all last night, sometimes we look at the package and don't even look. You got a real beat up, raggedy box, but right there on the inside, it'd be something real nice. You don't order something off of Amazon, that box that came all beat up, raggedy, but then you look at the inside. It's like, oh, oh, my iPad the game. You know when you find diamonds and pearls and all those different things, that stuff look it look rough coming out that out that ground. You start rinsing that thing off and start getting it cut right. You say, "Wow, this is beautiful." So we don't want to look so much at the package. And when you become spiritual enough, you don't look at the person, but you look at the spirit of God that's in them. And this is what I was teaching the yam last night. We got to get to the place. We come to. We got to get to a place where people can see the God in you. Sometimes we can be too carnal to where people can't see the God in us. And so when God stand up in you, in Ezekiel, if Jesus was calling, God was calling Ezekiel son of man because he was talking to himself in him. He saw himself in him and started talking to him. So sometimes, you know, see, we, we can see, you know, we, we, we can't really see the God inside of a person. We just see them, you know, because they be a lot of, sometimes y'all just too carnal. And so people can't really receive you, you know, in the spirit. But sometimes we got to get sensitive enough to the spirit to where we can be able to identify the spiritual things. Somebody say hallelujah. All right. Now, somebody else had a question. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely, it come out beautiful. Absolutely, just like gold, go through go through a hard process too, man. They be having all these impurities that come out of it, got sitting water and all that stuff like that. All right, now, all right. So Elisha, read, uh huh. Two or two. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, and the Lord hath sent, sent me, me uh -huh. to Bethel. Uh -huh. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth. And as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Uh -huh. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah and said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Everywhere this man is going, he's telling Elijah, hey, you don't have to come with me. He said, no, Pastor, I'm coming with you. <laughs> it's something that you got because one of these days, you, I know you're going to be transitioning. And when you go up, amen, I'm coming up with you. Amen. Remember, Joshua and Moses, Joshua, came, he went with Moses. He went with Moses to the top. He just ain't going all the way to the top. He went up where, where everybody else wasn't at. So he went up because his leader went up. Amen. So sometimes when your leader is going places and going places, and, and, you know, and you pay attention to who's close to the leader, you'll be able to tell where when the leader go up in the spirit, you'll see who the Lord and fall on. Amen. You can tell who got in the pastor's spirit. You can tell, amen, who's close because you can see, you can identify the spirit there. Amen. Yes. I 
Absolutely. Absolutely. If the congregation isn't spiritual enough, there's a lot of things that cannot be productive in the church. Until, when that pandemic hit, some of y'all have been the most spiritual in your entire life because you thought you were going to die. <laughs> y'all trying to make sure COVID, Lord, COVID don't hit me, Lord. Y'all was down there. Y'all was at every prayer meeting, Lord, I praise you. Thank you for COVID ain't coming. That was the most spiritual ever. But think about it. When y'all was that spiritual, I mean, what, what took place during, during COVID? Miracles took place during that time because everybody was in a spiritual place. Everybody was praying. They said, boy, this stuff getting crazy out here. Everybody start praying. Everybody fasting. So that when the church got spiritual, that's when things started to manifest. That's when God's spirit started to move. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, so he didn't want to leave. All right. Now, I want you to go down to, um, amen, Acts chapter 13. And if you follow, if you continue to read Second Kings, when you have time in your spare time, we'll go through it because I got to let y'all go. Uh, Second Kings chapter two, uh, finish reading that. You'll see that the other prophets they stood afar off, and when they stood afar off, you re realize they didn't get what Elisha got because they were too far away from the man of God. And sometimes when you're too far away from your pastor, too far away from your leader, you can miss movements of God. You can miss the next thing for your life because if that pastor going up whoever's close, close beside him going up with him and they're going to catch what he left off okay let, let, let me say that again so you can understand that all right come here son if you're behind the uh oh, there go. Step there. all right <laughs> trying to get y'all come here i don't want to fall and hurt myself here all right so if you yeah, just make sure this chair is stable because some of y'all tore up some of these good chairs. All right. So <laughs> the man of God is going up. And if he's close behind me, once I get here, where I transition and go up, he comes up and gets in that spot where I was at. And so the higher, it's just like steps, steps. And if you got steps, every step the man of God goes, if you close behind him, you're going you to go up that next step. Every step. So what happens is you fill in where he left off at. Amen. Good, thank you. Just like a person that's in a, in, in a business, a business firm. We always talk about cultivating and developing leaders that's behind us, meaning that whoever the GM is, if the GM is looking for promotion, he's going to make sure that one of his assistant managers are ready to slide into that seat of the general manager position while he goes into the district manager position. Amen. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Now, all right, let me, let, me, let me hurry up here. All right. Acts chapter 13 and 3. I'm going to read. And when they had fasted and prayed. And when they fasted and prayed. And laid their hands on them. And did what? Lay their hands. They laid hands on them. So in the Old Testament, they used to use oil to lay hands on them. But then the oil became, the, the men of God became the oil to lay hands on. So they didn't need the physical oil anymore. They just used to lay hands. Read, huh? They sent them away. And they sent them away. So they laid hands on them and sent them away. They didn't even use no oil because they anointed them by their hands. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 14. And so what happens is when I lay hands on y'all and we pray and I lay hands on you, what happens is the spirit that I have, it connects with the spirit that you have and it creates a combat compatibility. So now you can see us being able to work and operate in the spirit together. That's why some of y'all, that like, like when the praise and worship sing, some of y'all be very in tune because y'all be singing some of the message that I have already. It be already because you're in, the, in that spirit. That's why I tell y'all, y'all make sure y'all pray. So we can have that be in the same room, the same spirit, lay hands on y'all. So we got that same spirit of compatibility because you have to be compatible with me. You know why? Because when you get up here and sing, you got to be so compatible to where you got to destroy yokes in the atmosphere. So when a man of God come up, it's easy to preach. Yes. Prime example, it's just like a steak. Steak, you know, the atmosphere is like a steak. So what happens is that singing and that worship, it marinates it and tenderizes it. So when the word comes, the Bible says that the word is quick and it talks about it being sharp and powerful. So when that word comes, it automatically just starts slicing stuff. And so it becomes easy to slice in the spirit because you've done your job to tenderize. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So I, because I done tenderized the atmosphere, so now the man of God can come and minister freely. And you can tell, well, it's easier for a man, listen, I'll tell you something, that's the hardest thing to do is to preach in a messed up atmosphere. It's rough. Y'all don't feel it because y'all let y'all y'all be down there looking around and playing with your thumbs on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, looking out the window, looking at your wife. When is man gonna shut up so I can go home and eat? Right? So when the atmosphere is like that, what happens is it's hard for the man of God to preach. It can be hard. 
And you can tell, you can tell when it's hard. The atmosphere get crazy. That's why every time I get up, if it's like that, I just go into a crazy prayer. Let's go off in prayer. Amen. All right, read, huh? Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Ne neglect not the gift that's in thee. Which was given thee by prophecy. How did you get your gift? By what? Prophecy. Not only prophecy, but what? Uh huh. With the laying on of hands. So now I could prophesy a gift to you and lay my hands on you, and then you can get activated. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, read. Uh -huh. By who? Of the? Presbyterian. Presbyterian. So those are the men of God that lay hands on individuals, amen, during the gifting. All right, go down there to the book of Romans chapter 1. Amen. This is not happening in the church because people, did, it, it, it's almost strange when you hear, you hear somebody say, oh, the pastor lay hands on me and then I, I got active in ministry because the pastor lay hands on me. You say, what? Your pastor got to lay hands on you. Well, that's what the Bible say. So that's why a lot of times the gifts isn't operating in a lot of churches because they're not going by what the scriptures are saying. All right, one eleven. Read, uh huh. For I long to see you. For I long to see you. That I may impart unto you. That who may? I. May I. Who impart. wrote the book of Romans? Paul wrote the book of Romans, so he said that he may do what? Impart unto impart you. Impart unto you some spiritual some spiritual gifts. So the man of God can have the ability to impart gifts into you. That's what the Bible say. Amen. You got a problem with it, you might need to call Jesus. <laughs> and hopefully he answer. Amen. All right, read. Uh -huh. <laughs> to the end ye may be established. To the end ye may be established. All right, 2 Timothy 1 and 6. And then I got one more and then y'all I'm closing. All right, read. 2 Timothy 1 and 6. From which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jingling. Uh huh. Does it one and six? Yes, sir. Is it first Timothy the second? Second Timothy one. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift. That of thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, which is in ye, by the putting on of my hand. By the putting on of my hand. So the Bible is telling me that the, when this letter is written to Timothy, he said Paul's telling him that he lay hands on him and it's going to impart some gifts in him. Amen. Y'all see that? All right. Last scripture. I want you to go to uh, Matthew chapter 9 and 37. And I'm closing. Then said he unto his disciples, uh -huh. The harvest truly is plenteous. The harvest is truly plenteous. But the laborers are few. But the laborers are what? Few. Few. So now... Let me tell you, anybody know what the harvest is? Huh? Good. People. The people. So now, the pe not just people, but people that have gotten converted. People that have been, you know, that came out of the world and came into the church. Those are the harvest. So he said, the harvest is plentiful, but what? But the laborers are few. But the laborers are few. Now, who are the, la what are the laborers? Huh? converted people that are supposed the harvest converted becomes laborers so now if you, you what happens is you come from out there in the world you come into the church you become harvest you're supposed to take that and you're supposed to transition to go get other people so now you become a laborer to gain harvest and so we're lacking that in the church we don't have people that you, you all done became harvest but now you're not going out to grab you're not going out there to get you're not becoming a laborer Amen. So we need some folks that don't mind. What's a labor? A labor is somebody that work. So we need some folks that's, that's going to be able to work. Amen. Some of y'all don't, you know, don't like working. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we ain't got no brothers that don't like working. But some of y'all don't. And y'all need to straighten up. Got to tighten up. Got to work. Bible says, man don't work. You know what? Go get you better go work. <laughs> you gotta start working. Amen. So we need some people that, that works, and this goes for both genders, have the ability to go out and bring people in, bring the harvest in, be, become a laborer. Amen. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? All right, everyone stand, give the Lord a hand, praise tonight.